Howdy, Francis here with the uh, Texas Roadrunner channel. Now, um, as you saw in my last uh, ice chest air conditioning project, I modified it using some of the principles that Jason from Make and Do channel, which I'll put down a link below, um, tried out. And uh, you mainly have put in a screen on the bottom so the air goes underneath the ice and then comes up and out of the exhaust. Um, again, I was using my AC power inline duct fan. And I just got a box in the mail, and now I have a DC inline duct fan, but this is only four inches, whereas my other one was like, uh, you know, six inches. So I got to make some modifications on that board or cover or whatever on my ice chest. And so I'm thinking about some kind of an adapter. And also, since I was able to replace the battery on my Sears Die Hard inverter emergency battery, you know, uh, whatever you call it, uh, and it's working great now, I can run that AC unit off of DC now. And another thing, you know, in the future, I could probably get some kind of solar panel and run it off the solar panel or charge it up through the solar panel. Um, but we'll have to see. Uh, be an interesting po uh, project, so stay tuned. Now that I have my four inch inline duct fan in and my Sears die hard um, inverter repaired or the battery replaced. We can start working on those modifications, converting that ice chest AC unit to run off of DC instead of AC. Here's a quick review of the system. I will place the link down below on um, how I built this thing and how I modified it the first time to make it cooler and more efficient. But once again, it's a regular Coleman ice chest with a, this is a six inch inline inducted fan. And I have this duct work here that leads to a hole in the grating. And of course, as you can see, I have some handles so I can pull this out so I can use the ice chest as an ice chest if I want to. And these are the exhaust ports here. And of course, here's the grating that I've been using to keep the ice up on top and have the air come up from underneath to make it, well, supposedly more cold, uh, cooler air. Um, in my last upgrade or modification, it did work out, but not to my expectations. So what we're gonna do now Let's try to use these new pieces of uh, tubing and um, I don't know, AC ducting materials and some styrofoam to make an adapter. You see the, um, this is a four inch and that's about a, an eight inch hole that accommodated this fan. So I have to make an adapter. So I better use my, I better put on my thinking cap, right? More to come. So I'm gonna use these pieces of styrofoam to make my adapter. And you're probably wondering, is that gonna be sturdy enough? Well, I think so, because I'm gonna put silicon glue all around it to make it much more sturdier and a better type fit. So this, what's referred to as a cake or how it was sold, a styrofoam cake shape. I'm going to run a um, pin underneath and uh, draw out the size it should be. Then later on, I'm going to uh, drill a four inch hole down the center to accept the fan. There, that's my uh, line that I'm gonna cut out. I'm gonna cut out the excess that's around there. And again, folks, it doesn't have to be perfect uh, because um, 
Well, you'll see later on in the project. I just need to cut this excess off. As you can see, my blade on my saber saw isn't long enough to cut all the way through this styrofoam cake. So I'm gonna have to make two passes out of it. I've already done one side. I'll go ahead and cut the other side that I have also marked off right in here. Now all we have to do is rip off this excess here. And uh, I guess we could smooth some of this out with a rasper or something, and, but we'll make a test fit. Perfect. It's nice and tight. Okay, now we need to drill the center hole for the um, inline fan. Now for my hole in the center, I'm just gonna go ahead and use this uh, ducting since it, it's since the ducting will go over the, uh, I guess the tubing part of the fan. Um, and that way, you know, I'll just use that for my measurement. And I'm gonna have to do the same thing as I did before, make a cut on top and then reverse it and make a cut on Again, the bottom. Again, I just eyeballed it. It looks close enough. And like I said, it doesn't have to be totally perfect. Okay, I made my first cut, so I'll mark it and cut it on the bottom. It's been marked, so it's time to cut. Hopefully they'll meet. All right, good. It popped out. Now, it's hard to do this one-handed. Hang on. So hopefully you're getting the gist to this. See? But we need more secure. See? But we need to secure it better. So the way I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna cut these into circles. They're a little too big. As you can see, they wanna go over the handles. So I'll try to size them up and then we'll glue two of these pieces together. That will strengthen it. And then we will glue it to this part of the adapter. And then after that, we will cover it with silicon glue to give it more strength. Well, it looks like I can get away with a 10 inch circle. I don't know if you can see the markings or the, but uh, it, I pretty much had to just scratch in my line and I'll just follow the scratched in line to cut off the excess. One down, one more to go. Okay, there we go. Perfect size and it's not interfering with the handles. Next is to drill a hole down in the center to accommodate the ductwork and or the inline fan. Once again, I'm just gonna use the uh, bottom adapter as a template and just eyeball out my markings. Next, I'll go ahead and cut. Hopefully, maybe I can cut both of these at the same time. We'll just have to see. Now, I think you get the picture. My adapter to convert from six inch to four inch inline ducting fan. Now it's time to glue everything together and make it stronger like a composite material. So I laid down some glue and I'm just gonna spread it around with my finger. Of course, I'm wearing gloves. Now I glued the two pieces together and I applied some uh, pressure with, the, with a, uh, a jar or actually a can of nails. And um, I'm going to let that glue and get dry before I put the bottom part of the adapter on. I think the glue has had enough time to cure to uh, displace the pressure more evenly. I put that big can of nails inside this little igloo cooler and place the igloo cooler over the top of the adapter. So we'll work on uh, gluing the uh, two pieces of the adapter together. I've laid out the glue and now I'm just gonna use my uh, fingers to spread it out using these rubber gloves. I don't like the fact that these uh, metal wires that provide uh, support for the eyes and for a screen that I'm about to put on is so high. I'm going to try to cut the legs down about an inch and a half and see how I like that. I was satisfied with lowering the uh, wire rack an inch and a half. I'll do that same 
process with the other rack. There, that looks much better. I can, uh, of course, put more ice in here. Now, that's not to say in the future that I may not lower it any lower. We'll just have to see. It's time to work on that screen. For that screen, I need to get the overall dimensions of the width and depth right at the uh, level of the wire racks. I measured 21 by by 10 and a half. So what I'm gonna do is take this uh, hardware cloth here, which is like in quarter square inches, and I'm gonna add an inch to each side that I said earlier. So like 21 will come out to be like 23 and 10 and a half will be like 12 and a half. And then I'm gonna fold the, the sides up so it can have more of a compression fit on top of the screen. Now the glue has cured. Um, I wanna paint it blue. I'm not really all into that aesthetics, but the paint will help uh, strengthening the uh, uh, styrofoam. But then you ask, well, I thought you were gonna do that with the silicon glue. Well, I am, just like I did right here. So while the, um, the adapter is drying, I'll just work on my uh, screen over so, here. So, as I said, while this is drying, we'll work on the screen. Well, I got the screen cut out. Now I need to bend up the edges. I'm actually using a pair of channel locks to perform this procedure. And of course, some heavy duty gloves, right? Okay, the screen has a nice snug fit. The next thing that needs to be done is to drill out approximately a four inch in diameter hole for the ducting coming from the brand new four inch um, uh, inline fan. Again, I'm just eyeballing this because there's gonna be a lot of play with this flexible duct here. So I'm just gonna mark out the circle and then cut it out. Okay, she fits. Let's check on the adapter. Now the fabrication to this adapter is almost complete. I still need to cover it all with that uh, silicon glue to give it a lot more strength. We do have one more thing we need to accomplish. Remember, this is an uh, inline fan um, that uses 12 volt DC. So I need to come up with a way to plug it into one of these accessory connections like on your car or truck. So I'll be working on that next. Working on this while that glue job dries, right? That's gonna, that's gonna take all night. As you can see, it's a gooey, nasty process, but it will give this adapter a whole lot more strength. And of course, waterproofing. So here's an update on uh, our little project here. Um, I've been looking for a 12 volt accessory um, male to female cable to connect the DC power into my um, inline blower or in inductor fan or whatever you inline fan whatever you want to call it you know put like a female in here and um, have this uh, a 12 volt accessory extension cord plug into there and then from there I can plug into heck my cigarette lighter in the truck or the uh, 12 volt accessory on my Sears die hard inverter so I've been going around I can't find any monster like that I went to the auto parts store and they said nope you're not gonna be able to find one unless you go on Amazon well I don't want to wait to go on Amazon so the guy said, you're just gonna have to build it yourself. So that's what I'm gonna have to do. <laughs> it's getting light. Um, uh, this still needs to dry over here. So I'm gonna pick this, back, this project back up tomorrow. I know I'm running out of light, but I just wanted to get the soldering completed. And then tomorrow I'll work on the uh, 12 volt accessory extension cord to uh, plug into my inverter. So I've completed the soldering so now I want to um, put the heat shrinking tubing on and shrink it up and make sure everything's good and tight 
Of course, this is going to, of course, this is going to take all night to dry. And then in the morning, we will um, put the silicon glue for strength on the top part of the adapter. And I just used this uh, lighter that I use for starting up the grill to heat up this heat shrink tubing until it shrunk. And now we got some good connections. Okay, it's morning time. I flipped over the adapter and um, I'm gonna go ahead and spread that silicon glue on the, um, the top of this adapter. And I need to continue working on this uh, uh, the electrical connection here. I actually used my hair blow dryer to heat shrink the last uh, piece of uh, heat shrink tubing just to make the connection stronger and more stable and of course safer. Hopefully the uh, top of this adapter dries soon. We can give this project a try. Okay, now we have a nice tight fit and uh, there's no openings. So let's uh, do some testing. Okay, I hooked it up to the 12 volt accessory on my in on my inverter. And we definitely have a lot of air. So now I'm just mixing in my uh, big hunks of ice with the dry ice and then I'm going to be uh, pouring in the little ice. Okay, she's all filled up. We'll put the top back on. Ugh. It feels good. Right now it's 93 degrees outside and the uh, heat index has it up to 107. Now I'm inside a hot garage. But this feels really good. Let's uh, take some measurements now. Looks like I'm getting a reading of 54.7 degrees, which is a whole lot better. Let's try this other one. 55.6. Of course, it's all running off of uh, DC power. So after uh, two and a half hours of this running, I'm down to 4% power. It also looks like all my ice has melted, but a lot of the uh, dry ice is uh, still there. So yesterday, I only had one bag of dry ice in there. This time I put three, then again covered it up with ice. I just want to take some more measurements. If you remember, uh, it only lasted, well, the uh, Sears Die Hard inverter only lasted two and a half hours. When I opened up the, the uh, top of the igloo cooler, um, well, not Igloo, but Coleman cooler. Um, there was just a little bit of uh, ice left and just a little bit of dry ice left. So I would have given this project, you know, last like two and a half hours. But with more um, dry ice, let's see what happens. Okay, she's going again. Now I didn't put all the dry ice in a little Ziploc baggie so that uh, gas that you're seeing is carbon dioxide. 40 degrees, 40.8 degrees. 38, 37.9. 41.5. 33.7. Forty point five, forty one point seven, 
Looks like this middle one has the uh, coolest, 38.1. Well, I'm impressed. Finally got in the 30s like Jason did. I know it shows a little bit after five, but uh, I started at five o'clock. Let's see how long the inverter battery lasts and how long the ice stays frozen. Okay, it's getting a little late according to my watch. Come on, focus. It's not wanting to focus, but it's been about, why can't you focus? It's been about two and a half hours. Um, let's look at the charge on the inverter. What's left? 11%. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and unplug it. You can probably hear me better now. Well, it held up a lot better this time. Um, the dry ice is still here. Some of the dry ice has evaporated away. So this tells me something. Um, in reality, this setup is only really good for about two and a half hours. Let's go on in and um, do a recap on this project. Well, I'm back. Um, was this a worthwhile project? I don't know. I mean, if you're in your tent in the middle of the summer and it's pretty hot out there. I mean, I, I told you those temperatures, 107 on that first day and, and um, that was the heat index and 100 the next day. Um, let's see. It worked better when I added more dry ice. I think that was uh, another little secret there but it only lasted both the ice and the my um, dc power only lasted like two and a half uh, uh, hours as you saw and so make you know as far as power is concerned if you don't have um, ac power outlets at your campsite then you know you could daisy chain you know two more of those uh inverters together but that doesn't seem real practical um how to increase the um uh, ice i don't know maybe just have another bag of ice and another ice chest i, I don't know um then um let's see what else was i thinking about there are some power units i found on the uh, internet by uh what is it goal zero um they're like 1400 it's bigger than my inverter that could probably last you um, um you know more time on the power but on the cooling it really wasn't that bad because once the ice melted that air was hitting that water cold water and of course water acts as a heat exchanger so although the exhaust coming out of the ac unit wasn't that cold it was a heck of a lot cooler than the surrounding air it still felt cool but not like you know 50 degrees 40 degrees even that 30 something degree so um I think it might still be worthwhile. I'm gonna to have to take it out and uh, put it in the field again to, uh, to you know, test it out thoroughly. I've only done this once on a camping trip with a former girlfriend and uh, I think when we woke up, you know, um, since we had AC, it was, the motor was still running. We were still getting cooler, but not as cold as, um, you know, originally with all the ice course at that point in the morning the ice had melted one last thought when i was walking around uh, this is what i found yes they make these little spot coolers so if you do have ac you know at your campsite you could always plug in one of these things <laughs> okay well anyway you guys be safe out there and take care
I'm Francis Kiefel, and I approved this video.